very beginning, like during the previous talk, uh, we were told that people who worked at school in 1980s, 1990s are dinosaurs and it's like ancient times. Uh, uh, and, but uh, the majority of people who are here started to, we met them, we met all of you when the school started or just before that. And uh, these were 1980s, 1990s. And uh, uh, we want to remember that time. And we want you to talk about how you met the school, how you met us. Uh, we want everyone to be able to say something and to mention your connection to the school and uh, talk maybe about our students, which is very important for us. And uh, how we all created this school. And uh, uh, I want those who worked uh, with us in 1980s, we just started uh, a few, half an hour ago with the people who came from the Netherlands. And actually that was the first exchange program we had uh, with Luzak College, uh, which is located, I believe, up to now all over the Netherlands. Yeah. And we had students who were visiting, and here there was Anster Wurz that organized it. She's a very good friend of mine since 1986. She was Chernobyl time. And uh, she uh, and Franz and Jose Van Helder organized this exchange, and they talked about this exchange. In uh, 1980s, uh, we were not starting the school yet, but we were working in another school. And there was a lady whose name was Deborah Deleur. We were doing classes with her, team teaching classes. We were working in a school that was called Dom Stankevice, where later I met Elaine Wilson, uh, and she will hopefully yeah. talk about it too. Deborah, if you say a few words about uh, what you thought on education and how you shared the ideas with us. Well, first of all, yes, I want to say, as everyone feels, I am very honored to be here today. And thank you, Tatiana, for including me. I, I don't feel like I was a part of the beginning of the school. Um, I guess I should just start with the fact that I met Tatiana in 1989 in Moscow. My husband and, and I um, were posted to the American embassy there for a three-year assignment. And I was looking for things to do. And I found the English school that um, Tatiana was just speaking about. And um, I actually got to team teach with Tatiana and a few other women there. And I had never team taught before. And I loved it. It was such a wonderful and enriching experience. Um, we had such a great time together. I remember our students even putting on a play. It was a little version of The Wizard of Oz. And Tatiana had come up with a costume for the lion and the Tin Man. And it was just, <laughs> just everything. It was, you don't remember. It was wonderful. And um, in those days, uh, Tatiana talked to me a lot about her dream of starting her own school. And, for the, and then it was just a dream. But I knew that if there was anyone in the whole world that could make this dream come true, it was going to be Tatiana. So our tour in Moscow ended and my husband and I moved on to another posting, another country, another language. And uh, it was then that I found out that her school had opened. And I was so happy and so proud that she had had this, this vision and that she had been able to make it come true. And here we are 30 years later, celebrating this wonderful anniversary. And I just wanna say congratulations to you, uh, Tatiana. We also met in Geneva a few years That's later. There was a conference of European yes. Council of International Schools. Yes, we did. It was quite uh, a serendipitous encounter. Um, I was standing to check in at the hotel and there I heard a voice behind me. <clears throat> and Tatiana's voice is, I think, quite distinctive. And I thought, could that be Tatiana from Moscow? And she, I turned around and there she was. And I said, Tatiana? She said, Debbie? And we couldn't believe that we were both there for the conference. It was an amazing conference. I remember our keynote speakers were super. And we saw each other later at the hotel and we said, we really have to have dinner together. 
and talk about everything. And I remember we found a little restaurant up in the old town of Geneva and we sat and we and talked. And Marina was there. Marina and Marina was, was there. there. And I think that was mm -hmm. the first time I actually met Marina because I had never really met her. You had talked about her, but it was just such an amazing experience to be all together. And I was teaching at um, Marymount International School there uh, in Rome and they had sent me to the conference. I was doing middle school and high school ESL. Um, after I left Moscow, I did go back to the United States for a little bit. Um, I think it was just, um, yeah, a couple of years, long enough for me to get my master's degree. I did my master's in uh, multicultural education and curriculum development at George Mason University in Fairfax. And um, I just retired actually after 27 years of teaching. I retired in 2019, I had been teaching at a little elementary school in Prince William County Schools in Virginia. I taught K through five and the joy of my life with little kindergartners and started my day every morning. My um, colleague and I, we actually team taught Tatiana and I thought of you because I said, let's team teach, this will be fun. And I went back to our days together and we did. And for about three years, we had 18 little kindergartners <laughs> that joined us for 45 minutes every morning and we sang songs and we said poems and we did all sorts of things and had so much fun with them. And it was just a good way to always start my day. But again, remembering our team teaching together. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. You will meet more teachers here now. Yes, I want Different. to. Different school epochs, not just <laughs> ancient, but also middle ages and modern times. I think Ms. Wilson, this was 1980s, the end of 1980s when we met. Yes, oh, we met in 1980s, I, yes. I'm so, I'm so busy. No, I, actually, it was a little later than that. Uh, Dunstan Kivich had been uh, there for a year or two and you came for an interview. And I said, when you left, I said to Natasha Promislova, now there's somebody we have to hire. She is going to be great. And look what you've done. <laughs> you have become great. Well, now I, I come back and forth every year when I can, uh, not possible this year. And uh, I lecture at the school and I lecture at the embassy. And um, on the state side, I have a, a weekly television program um, where I produce uh, art appreciation lessons that um, are available online for anybody who is interested in art to see. Um, I have written a number of books. I've done a lot of different things, um, but I have to say that one of my joys is to come to Moscow. I feel like it's my second city and to see all of the teachers and to spend time just being in the space. Uh, I've enjoyed it very much. It's been an enriching part of my life. In 1980s, we had an exchange, we had several exchange programs as the school started. The first exchange program uh, to California happened in 1991. We started uh, preparation for this exchange program in 1990 when our friends got us acquainted with theater director Alex Urban and I think Cassie Bratches should be here now yep and she can talk about it hi Tatiana and Marina hello. how are you hello dear fine so happy Valentine's you. Day same to you um so in 1991, we sent a young college student to Moscow, Russia to find this Tatiana woman and her, and her school uh, to propose doing a youth theater exchange program with her students and ours. Um, at the time, uh, Alex, my husband and uh, I, we had 10 children's theaters in California, five in Southern California and five in Northern California. So Rick Madden came back and after <laughs> trying to find her, I, I remember it was quite a story to find you because he didn't have your address in Cyrillic. And anyway, I think he knocked on your door and went, I am here, <laughs> somebody got him to you. Um, and we decided to move forward with the plan. Um, uh, Russia was still communist then, Moscow was communist. And it was a little bit of a hard sell to 
our families to say, we're going to take your kids to Moscow, <laughs> knowing nothing about what we're doing. Um, so we had, I believe it was 24 young people and uh, our staff, and we made it there to Moscow and uh, were met at the airport, um, which was a little scary, as I remember all the troops and they took our kids different directions to get to the gate. And I was, no, you can't take them. And my husband was like, stop it, shut up, they have guns. <laughs> anyway, um, so the, the, the journey began and we went to a, a young pioneer camp and uh, they bust us in there, uh, Tatiana and Alex and Rick Madden and- uh, there, was, there was Nina in the camp, Nina Sucha. Right. But I'm saying we we went in a separate van with I believe Arcadi driving uh, to the to the camp. He stopped in the middle of the street to pick up watermelons that had fallen off a truck. Um, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there was anyway, a truck and watermelon fell out of the truck, but they were still good. <laughs> so we were picking them up to eat in the camp. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so we had a. Um, I don't remember how many days, seven days maybe we're at the camp, Tatiana? I think a week, yes. But yeah, and the children rehearsed uh, in the middle of a birch forest and I stayed in some strange housing behind the birch forest with Russian people and I couldn't speak the language, but uh, somehow we mimed and communicated. And then uh, we went into Moscow and the young people went and homestayed with uh, the students that they were working with. And um, I can remember that was a little frightening for me to send my kids off in the streets with strangers. I mean, I was responsible for all these young people along with my husband. Um, but Tatiana always made it feel safe and it, it, it was gonna happen no matter what. <laughs> and um, we're very lucky. She, she found us a lovely theater and uh, we went there and we performed West Side Story with her children and our children. Um, it was quite quite a, a remarkable time. Then we left and two weeks later, they all came to America, to California. They came through New York and um, came here and we performed in Northern California and Southern California and um, had the pleasure of taking these young people and Arcadi and the staff into an American grocery store for the first time and uh, the delight of Arcadi running around the grocery store picking up fruit and all these things that were there. He was overwhelmed and and uh, Nina was, there was nothing in the stores at that time. Yes, nothing. I remember going to a store in your country and and trying to buy a loaf of bread and uh, to take to someone's home as a gift. And, and that was an adventure for us. Um, so we drove down the coast of California and sightseeing as much as we could. They came uh, to Southern California, which is where I live, and performed here. Uh, we had the opportunity to take them to Disneyland. They got to perform um, at Disneyland. So um, it, it, was, it was just wonderful. Uh, I can't even express. Um, Moscow became forever in my heart. Um, the last night when we were having our farewell party and the TV was on at one of my friend's homes, <laughs> And that was the night of the coup in Moscow. Yeah, it was August, so, uh, 19th of August, 1991. And it was just quite frightening. <laughs> we, we just, the kids were watching it happen on a uh, large screen TV. And uh, Tatiana and I were like, ah. <laughs> we were, and Nina was there and, and uh, it was, it was just a, a, a moment embedded in my mind forever. Um, the next morning, we were on the phone with the State Department and uh, government officials saying, what do we do? We have these, it was, it was like, what do we do? And this government, the State Department of the United States said, unless they're gonna have asylum here, you need to put them on a plane and send them back to Moscow. And <laughs> that was just like, Aha, how do I do that? Um, so uh, it was a very tearful time at the airport. Um, you know, lots of crying because um, we didn't know what we were sending you to. What if in New York City, when you got there, what was going to happen? And uh, I don't even know, even know this story, 
that's happened. But we landed in Moscow and we saw the tanks leaving Moscow as we were going to the downtown Moscow. Uh, and that all happened during the visit to California. <laughs> For the record, I have zero recollections of that. All I remember is the farewell party. That is the last thing I remember is hanging out on the beach and signing the blanket. I have zero recollection really? of wow. any of this. Unbelievable. Как я могу сейчас по английски разговаривать, Татьяна Аркадьевна? Я забыла даже элементарно. I should tell everyone again. Zara <laughs> deceived me back in 1990. When we started the whole thing with uh, California, she said she spoke English. <laughs> <laughs> she was singing in English. She, she, we were doing uh, West Side Story and she was singing uh, all the songs of West Side Story in English. And it sounded like she spoke excellent English. <laughs> but that was, that was it. <laughs> Oh my. Anyway, just um, okay. and then we were we were very lucky. We we returned. We loved it so much, and it was so great that we returned in uh, 1994 and did the show Greece and uh, did one more round. And uh, for us going back after the fall and seeing the difference, uh, I, I as horrible as it all was, I I'm really happy that I saw Moscow as it was and Moscow as it was becoming. And um, then in 2011, uh, my daughter and I, my husband had passed away by then. My daughter and I returned again for the 25th, I think it was your 25th anniversary and uh, the dedication of your multi-purpose theater room to, uh, that's named after my husband. That's right. um, we that have for an auditorium me, named after your husband, after Alex Irvin. Um, so going back in 2011, that was very joyful to see where the school now is and what it became. And from that vision that Tatiana had uh, many, many years ago, it was very small when we went and to, to see the, the school and the program and what she built. And um, my daughter, Allison, went with each class and did a little bit of fun theater games with them. And we went to a Shakespeare festival, but just we came back and just the report back to our people was. Uh, so we, we have, it's called Metropolitan Educational Theater Network. Um, we have been in existence for over 30 years now. Um, our particular, my husband started this program many, many years ago in a small way and it grew to 10 children's theaters. Uh, at one time, like I said, and uh, now we have five all in Southern California. And um, we do very large scale, wonderful shows with uh, young people. And But it's about education. Alex was an educator. So he always says, uh, we're very devious. We trick the kids by doing theater with them, but we're actually teaching them life skills and uh, self-confidence, self-esteem. Uh, public speaking, all those things that come from theater and uh, they don't know it. But then we do have the students that come back now and say, thank you, thank you. That changed my life. That made me who I am today. Um, I'm able to walk into a board meeting and conduct a board meeting uh, with the greatest of confidence. I know how to read the room, all those kinds of things. So that's why our program exists. Um, right now with COVID, uh, our program unfortunately has been down since March. So we're a full year with no shows, no rehearsals, oh. nothing happening. So that's very hard on us um, emotionally and mentally. Uh, it's very hard on us financially. Um, we're hoping we can make it to the other side of COVID as we're a nonprofit and we rely on ticket sales and workshop fees to do what we do. So um, that's where we sit today. We just did do our first virtual uh, Met movie. We have a uh, show Beauty and the Beast that was written for us many, many years ago. And uh, we did that virtually with all our groups and they are in the process of being edited uh, by a professional film ed editor from Hollywood and a musical person. We screened our first one a few weeks ago and it was real well received. We did costumes and scenery the best we could. And it's kind of different from any of the other things we've seen out there. So we're really proud of that. So that's how we know Miss Tatiana and um, and are with her school and we're so fortunate that that happened so many years ago. Hi, it's Linda. Linda yes. Robert. Yes. Hi. 
I'm so Good happy morning. to see you. I am yeah. like just thrilled to death. And um, I heard a lot of this other conversation uh, from somebody else. And I just wanted to say one thing before I forgot to say it, because nobody else, everybody who knows you knows how well you make things happen, I think is the right word. And uh, what happened to us one time, remember when you were at our house and then you went to, um, I guess you went to Georgia. Yeah, from Augusta, Georgia. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. And it, and it was during the Masters golf tournament. And uh, you said, you, you called Laurie and you, my husband, Laurie, and you said, Laurie, is there any, would you want to have tickets to this golf tournament? And my husband is a golfer extraordinaire. <laughs> And he just loves golfing. And he said, what? You can't get tickets to that because of course nobody can get tickets to the golf, to the masters unless they've had them for years. And you said, I have them. And so Lori drove to Georgia and picked up those tickets from the guy at the church. And it was like, it was, I, I just, anyway, it was a highlight of his lifetime. And of course, you've been a highlight of my lifetime and made so many things available to me. And I want to thank you for that, really. And we're going to talk about this exchange, but uh, as it is now talking about Augusta, uh, there is Kira, uh, who is a great daughter of uh, our, we call them parents, uh, Lila and Ray Jackson. We met them many years ago at the end of the 80s, the beginning of the 90s. They helped me with my son and somehow the whole family got involved. Kindra's mom, Dana, worked in a school. Do you know the story, Kindra? Maybe you tell it. I'm not quite sure which story we're telling you about how we ended up at the church into the houses of your family. 12, 12 people from Russia, 10 students and two teachers. So my grandparents, I really honestly don't know exactly how Tatiana and my grandparents met, but I know my grandparents. No, we met through your mother. Okay, through my mother, mm -hmm. okay. And my family has this really crazy habit of just adopting anyone who needs a home. And um, so uh, I remember Nani and Poppy coming home and talking about Tatiana and how excited they were to have met her. And the next thing I knew, they said, well, she's got a son. He needs to come to the United States. I'm pretty sure he's going to live with us for a while. And... <laughs> Sure enough, we ended up with, uh, we ended up having Serge. Serge and I grew up like siblings. We fought like siblings. And we were in one class with Serge. Yes, we graduated together, but we picked on each other and we we treated each other really genuinely like siblings. So um, we, spent, we spent holidays together and in the midst, of this relationship that my mother and Tatiana and my grandparents and Tatiana had had forged, uh, somehow someone came up with the idea of having an exchange program to Russia. And I was the beneficiary of one of those trips. So I went on the exchange program. I went to Russia. It was my first time ever being on a plane. The first time I had ever been on a plane was a flight from Atlanta, Georgia to Moscow. So um, it, it was trial by fire, I guess. I had never even been on a plane and then I was on one for like 14 hours, but um, it was such a great experience for me uh, to have been able to be received in, in Moscow so lovingly. Um, I, I believe that the girl that hosted me, her family was so sweet. It was Olga. I don't remember Olga's last name, but she was just the most precious girl and her family took me in. And I believe the mom, I didn't realize that then I was young and naive and I didn't understand the world, but I think her mother was dying of brain cancer when they had me and oh, they hosted me yeah. anyway. And I, I didn't understand. That was, that was Sasha. And, wow. um, I, I, I didn't know at that time. I didn't understand what a sacrifice it was to take in someone from another country when, you know, 
there's somebody sick in the family, but they were so kind to me. They were so sweet. We were able to travel around. Um, <laughs> I will never forget. I can't remember which building it was in, but we, I don't, I think maybe it was the Hermitage, but we got to wear these like dust mops on our feet and mm -hmm. slide around. And I still, okay. I still tell people about that going to Russia. And one of the coolest things was they put dust mops on your feet when you're touring. Um, the Bulgarian princess, we met this, this Bulgarian princess. It's another one of my claim to fames. I tell everybody that I actually met a Bulgarian princess in Russia and toured Russia with her. And she just came along with us. Um, but we, we had the best relationship with, uh, Tatiana and Marina and Serge, um, just because my grandparents were so good at, at forging relationships. My grandparents traveled all over the world, helping people. I, I didn't realize this until you asked me to speak about this, but the number of schools that Nani and Poppy actually helped build and start in other countries. There's one in Honduras one in Panama, one in Russia, they, I think they more just consulted with Tatiana, mm -hmm. um, you know, sharing but, ideas. And but uh, your granddad was teaching math for a while. Yes, yes, he was a math teacher. Um, and then I think he, he helped start three schools here in the United States. And so um, I, I, I didn't realize it at the time, but I think my grandparents are the ones who instilled in me a love for culture and for different people and for different cultures. And Russia was my first taste of being in a place that I didn't understand. And I, I, I didn't know very much. The world was very different back then. You know, the internet, we didn't have the internet. You know, if you wanted to learn about another culture, you had to, you had to either go there or you had to read books about it. And so it was a very shaping experience for me for the first time to step into a different country and to meet different people and for the first time in my life to look around and think this is very different but there are things about this that I really like and I think from every country I've been in and every place I've been I've taken pieces of the cultures of other countries and tried to put them you know into my own life as I'm raising my daughter and I think that comes from my grandparents and their love to travel and their love to connect with other people and what are you doing now? I know, but tell the others. Please. Yes. So I am actually uh, an administrator in a private school here in Augusta, Georgia. I'm the director of educational technology. Um, I, I guess the best description of my job is um, strategic innovation. So I'm trying to lead strategic teaching practices and um, the technology side it really that's just a little tiny piece of it because the technology just allowed us to do things a little bit differently mm -hmm. so i try to cast a vision for what um education can look like and how you know we can be moving forward towards uh very very student-centered education allowing our students to be very involved in their learning lots of steam and stem mm -hmm. and design thinking and project-based learning that really is uh applicable to the real world and so my job now is to um, to cast that vision at my school and to prepare my teachers and uh, train them to move towards that new vision of, of teaching and learning. Andrew, that was not it. After spending three months in the States uh, of summer, on my summer vacation, I come um, to school and our English teacher, Nina, um, asks us about our summer holidays. So I go and say, you know what, I was in the States and I spent the time with my Nani and Poppy and continue telling the whole thing what we did. Uh, when Deanna was still at the pool and everything. So I was telling <laughs> all of that. And then she's, she goes, who are Nani and Poppy? I go, mm, sort of my grandparents. And then Nina, <laughs> after the class, I didn't know this part, so my mom told me. Uh, she comes up to mom and she asks her, and have your parents moved to the States? And mom goes, not that I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> sort of, yeah. Two parents. Then I explained to her that we have other set of parents and grandparents, and they are Jack and Twyla Jackson. And uh, uh, our former student has the name. It was Ray Jackson who was teaching math. 
Thank you. And yeah. uh, talking, uh, just to continue, uh, there is another story of Michelle Barton and Trey Barton, uh, who lived in Augusta, Georgia, and now they live in Atlanta. Our, our story kind of started the same way. Um, Ray and Twyla had a group that were going to go to Russia. I had only been out of the country one time, and that was just to go to Mexico. So it was a quick little flight. And then my husband comes home one day and says, we're going to Moscow, Russia. And I'm like, we're going to Moscow. Are you serious? And he says, yes, I've met this man. I'm working on his trip. There's 23 of us. We're all going. I told him I would do his trip so long as my wife and I could go. Now I've been probably, I think we counted 23 visits. So now we've been back and forth 23 times. Um, amazing friends. We don't just say friends, we say family. Um, Tatiana and Marina are like sisters um, to us. The amount of people that we've met through SAS Marina and Tatiana and Marina um, is just been a blessing. I mean, it has thoroughly been a blessing. Um, the, the times that we spend there is always an adventure. Um, we went the first time in March of 94. Um, and stayed in the home of um, Sasha Nikolaeva when and her parents. And um, she now came through the United States to do a hosting program through Curtis Baptist Academy. Stayed with us in the summers and with other families, doctors and music um, ministers and such for three years. Um, and she was a graduate of Tatiana's school or she was in Tatiana's school at the time when it was just um, I think your classes were in the evening. I mean, fast forwarding, I mean, we stayed in her home. Um, her parents became um, dear family members of ours. So I do say that Sasha, like Marina, is my are my little uh, Russian sisters. So it's amazing how God doesn't always do family through birth or through marriage. He does it just through the love of Christ. So um, that has been an amazing journey for us. Um, my husband woke me up this morning and and you know with that valentine kiss and and what have you he said you know where we were one year ago today and i said yes i was in moscow right outside of the when in a hotel right around the corner from the Bolshoi um theater and um i was very 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 sick possibly we think possibly with covid and i realized you really don't realize i'm gonna cry um how much people mean to you until you can't be with them. Please. So, <laughs> love you all. And Michelle now has a Russian son. Yes. Yes. <laughs> he has a Russian son uh, whose name is Alex. Alex. Tell us. Can, can you tell a story? So, big story. Um, in 2005, um, my husband and I ventured to adopt um, a little boy. Um, he was six at the time. He came over on a hosting program through New Horizon for Children. And um, so he, at the time, was six. We got to go back over in, let's see, June to do our referral visit and got to, you know, meet him again, see him and everything. And then we were promised it would be about six to eight weeks later. We would get to actually go again and bring him home. And it ended up being six months. So um, anyway, we, that was a, a wonderful adventure. So once again, God doesn't always have someone, you know, a baby grow within your womb. He actually has them grow within your heart. So um, Russia is definitely near and dear. And, and every bit of that started with that trip from Ray and Twyla Jackson taking us over and staying in the homes of the, the students of um, Sassarina. for so many people. Yes, it has. It's definitely changed the lives. When we started the program, Tatiana and I decided that it was going to be perfectly fair. And that meant that when I brought students from the United States with two teachers, that the Russian families would host them and take care of their food and their, their needs. And then when the Russian students and Tatiana and two of her in educators came to the United States, then the Americans would do the same thing. And it turned out to be a wonderful program, I think, for everybody. And Tatiana and I worked very hard 
on both sides of the Atlantic to make sure that the students who came and the teachers, if this would be their only trip, that it would be a trip that they would always enjoy and that from it they would have learned a great deal. I made sure that my students knew some Russian words before they got there. I knew, I told them how they should behave and they were wonderful, they did it. Um, we, Tatiana and I planned uh, excursions uh, in the United States, Philadelphia, New York City, Washington, DC, whatever we could do even to stay overnight. And in Russia, we went to some of the Golden Ring cities and we also went to Leningrad. The first year we went to Kiev. I mean, we had such energizing, exciting times. And in fact, I still hear from some of the students that were Russian and that also are American that I uh, still remember and happily remember the times that they spent with Tatiana and me and their other Russian and American friends. It was, it was a great time. Yes, and the first time I came, I stayed with Linda, I believe. And yes. Linda was, teach was a German language teacher. So yes. Can you say yes, a few words? Well, I, I, I mean, it was, uh, again, Elaine and Tatiana, it was the, it changed my life in um, many ways. I had traveled a lot before that, but I had never been to Russia. I mean, of course, I've been to Germany and most of, the, of Western Europe. And um, Elaine called me and said, do you want to go to Russia? And I was like, whoa, <laughs> do you remember that, Elaine? <laughs> and then, um, and we did. And it was just, I, like all of you, I think, it was a life-changing experience for me, and I will never forget forget it, and never forget my dear Tatiana and Elaine uh, for giving me that amazing experience, and um, and it made my idea of travel even broader than I ever thought it would be. So, um, and just seeing you here, Tatiana, now is like just a dream come true for me, and thank I'm you, coming thank to you. see you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you. Yeah, because, Elaine, <laughs> how many they, teachers on both sides were you? Do you remember? How many teachers yeah. what? Yes, where in all, in all those oh, Each year I, I pick two teachers and I pick two teachers based upon what I felt were the finest examples of educators in the school district that I was uh, working in, supervising. Okay. And of course I included Linda, but one time it was a social studies teacher. And I mean, they, they, Linda was in language, they're English. There were different fields, it, it didn't matter. One of the teachers, in fact, the last year that we had the exchange and Linda was there with uh, a man that had always dreamed that he would have the opportunity to teach a class of Russian students in Moscow. And I shared that with Tatiana, that was his dream and we made it happen. And Craig, his name is Craig Kunkel. Craig has never forgotten it. He loved that opportunity. He could teach social studies to Russian students in Moscow. That was his big goal. Fantastic. It was, it, it's amazing actually. The whole, I'm, as I said um, to both of you, Elaine and to you, Tatiana, it was a life-changing event. Uh, even though I felt like I was, you know, I'd been around the world, but man, I hadn't been. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, just, it just opens up a door that, um, you know, I'm still so thankful to both of you for that. Hello, Tatiana, can you hear me? It is delightful to see you again. Um, and I, um, I just want to correct uh, one thing you said about me. I was never your boss. Uh, I don't <laughs> think in your presence I ever considered you anything more than a partner and a colleague, um, because your your school, uh, the South School that uh, we took and Virginia uh, took us to several times, was just a marvel, a wonderful school. I thought. You might um, it be a, one testimony to the quality of your school uh, was demonstrated with Zhenyun. Um, and I must say, 
when you called me, uh, actually sent a fax at that time before the age of computers, um, and we took her on, and she has now become a very close a part of our family. Um, but when when uh, she came, uh, we tried to get her into the Chapel Hill school system. She had just graduated from the science school in in Moscow, and uh, Jean, uh, my wife, took her to meet the admissions um, person who would get her to arrange her schedule. And um, the, the, she suggested three courses. And Jenya said, I didn't come here to take a partial course. I want a full load. And the counselor said, we bring foreign nationals into this preparatory school uh, every year, and we've never allowed them to take a full uh, load in this college preparatory program that is quite rigorous. She insisted on it, which is a very unusual response to a person who's just been accepted on a scholarship to be uh, setting the perimeters, but she didn't. And the uh, counselor said, come back with your host mother and uh, in two weeks, and we'll see how you're doing. And uh, she did. And when they came back, the four courses that she went, was in said, this graduate from your school, Tatiana, is absolutely amazing. Move her yes, from uh, AB calculus to advanced calculus. And, and, and all the other courses were honors uh, students. And then the remarkable result of all this is that never had a foreign national student taken a full load. And the faculty of this preparatory school always recognized the outstanding member of the class and had never gone to a foreign national. But in this case, for the first time, they said, Genia Rutenyan is the best, and this was a a school that prepared kids who were heading on to the Ivy Leagues. Uh, it was the best student in the class. And that's a testimony to the pre preparation that you had provided in that wonderful school in Moscow, and also to Genia, who is very hardworking and very challenging. And you put those together and you have an absolute winner, which uh, Genia has been ever since. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fay. Um, and Jenny is here. Can you say a few words how you met Jean and Robert Fay? Well, I, I met them through you, Tatiana Arkadina. That was no, no other, I mean, there was no other way. Um, yeah, I mean, this was, there was kind of an inkling of a dream I had to go and study in the States. I think this was the 90s. There was sort of the, the, the dream. America really was, you know, the land of the, the free and, you know, Coca-Cola and all the best things in the world. <laughs> and so, and I graduated from Marina. You know, I was confident. I, I knew that we got amazing education and my language. Oops, sorry. Kids in the background. Education. And Tatiana was generous enough that, to say, hey, you know, let, let's let's try to to go in the states for a year to to go to high school and she reached out to Jean and Robert and I had originally I think it was supposed to be Pennsylvania right Tatiana Arkadina okay. yes and Elaine and Linda should remember that we had yes. an yeah. idea of a, a, a West Shore school district yeah. but the lady there who wanted to take Jenya uh, and who lived in that district and that's what the only reason she could take Jenya. Uh, to a public school, uh, I, I think something happened and she could not take her. And that's, that's right. why we had to, fi to find a school. And uh, I found the parents. <laughs> I, I mean, absolutely, literally the parents, because I mean, we're, we're a family. Robert walked me down the aisle and Jin is my, my, my mom, my second mom. So I, I can't think of them any other way. And they took a chance on having a daughter, you know, a Soviet kid with big glasses and huge Afro <laughs> hair. My hair is like definitely better now than it was. And a total nerd. 
And um, Jean drove me from school, picked me up and helped me through all the processes of applying to colleges and drove me to colleges. All fi Well, we, I applied to 15 and we drove to all the, like, several of the ones in the South. And um, but I mean, it's true. The testament to Tatiana, to Sash Marina, Tatiana's school is that I was able to take six courses first semester, seven courses, that's a, like more than a norm, you know, full loads at Durham Academy, Durham, North Carolina, those of you who are familiar with, the, with the, the South. And three of them were AP courses, BC Calc, AP German, AP Euro. And AP German is also a testament to Sash Marina because normally those, you know, those of you from the States know that AP German, that's usually your at least fourth, but usually fifth year of German. At Sash Marina, I only had three years of German. Three years. It was the 9th, 10th, 11th grade, Natalia Palna. And had those three teacher. The three years of German in Sash Marina put me at a very comfortable level of AP German in Durham Academy and then on in college to place me out of all the um, beginning level Germans and then uh, German. And then I ended up minoring it. And ironically, fate would have it ended up meeting a German and now I live in Germany and able to get a job uh, here because of that skill. Unfortunately, I'm not an educator anymore. So that was another inspiration from Sash Marina and from Robert, uh, their, their love of education. I became an educator. I studied at Davidson College and then went on to teach at Charlotte Country Day School for 19 years, teaching history, oh. social studies and serving as department chair. So, we had a great history teacher at school. Unfortunately, yeah. he is not with us anymore. Uh, he, but Genia, uh, Genia is a good follower. He, he mm -hmm. was he was the reason that history was became part of my life forever. And then Tatiana Kadin and Jean and Robert made made it easy <laughs> for me to pursue those dreams and to really to to achieve what I have. And my mom, I know, is. Uh, and uh, there were students uh, who studied in North Carolina, UNC Chapel Hill. And uh, then there was a program when three students from Chapel Hill came for a year. Uh, maybe you tell the story, the girls who are here. Well, I can't think, are, are you speaking about us? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Well, actually, there were four of us. Um, there was Candy and Brandy and Lena and Kelly. And um, we did not know each other at all. UNC Chapel Hill is a huge college and the four of us didn't know each other. We met um, this little orientation session that you had uh, at UNC. And then we got on a plane and um, I think Kelly knew some Russian, but the rest of us didn't. It was by far the best experience that I know I can speak of. Uh, Lena is still on right now. Um, we still keep in touch for the most part. Um, Kelly now lives in England. So when she comes back home to North Carolina, we make a point of the three of us getting to, or at least Kelly and Lena and I get together. Um, we've seen Brandy a, a few times. It's been over 20 years. Um, Tatiana, I don't know if you remember when you came back to North Carolina years, years after yes, we were there in Henderson, which is my we hometown. Had trip, we had a trip with Greece. Yeah, we, and, uh, and, and the little prince. Hmm? And the little prince and I still have the Henderson uh, sweatshirt at home. Okay. <laughs> and, um, and you ended up spending the night at what was then the superintendent of the district, who was my high school principal. So um, I don't know if you remember, she called me or the, the wife called me. And um, it was so we got to see each other and I got to see some of my students. Um, by this point, it had been, I think, five or six years. And then several years ago, um, I, I was able to go back to Russia and I came and visited for a day. Um, I just think the whole experience that you have provided, especially someone like me, um, from this poor little town of Henderson, North Carolina, I'd never really been anywhere, never thought I would go anywhere. And that you brought these four young women who had no idea what the rest of their life was going to be like. And you brought us to Moscow and we lived together. We did everything together. We're, we're still together. But the opportunity that you gave us to see such an incredibly different part of the world, it, it has just stuck with me. It has influenced me incredibly. Um, I'm still a teacher. I teach high school in a small little town in Eastern North Carolina. All of my students can tell you stories about Russia. 
Um, they may never go, but they pass on my stories that I give to them. My daughter is now in high school. She cannot wait to go somewhere in the world. So in a couple of years, I may be calling you and say, well, to take on my daughter. We'll have an exchange program. <laughs> so as she can teach, she can do whatever. But um, kind of like when, when Kendra Sue was saying how emotional she gets, it's, it's the biggest thing that I think ever happened to me as 22 years old. And uh, it's just something that sticks with me. And Kelly and Lena and I have talked about it for years, how we want to go back for one of your anniversaries. So to, for you to be able to have this today and us be able to Zoom with you and see all these other people that have somehow another work of South Marino, um, it's just, it's a huge day for me. I, I thank you, Tatiana, and, and I love seeing Marina. I think, this program was, I think this program was organized by Dr. Stedman, who was the head yeah. of School of Education, and Dr. Fay. Two yeah. of them decided that you should go to Russia instead of going to a school for a year to a school in North Carolina. And it was wonderful. It, it helped me be such a better teacher in, in so many ways. I, I taught English at your school and, and here I teach history, but it just helped me to really know who I, who I am as a teacher and what my skills are. Okay. I, I agree with Candy. It was an amazing experience and I'm so grateful. And, and it also, it comes up often in, um, in my conversations with my husband and my kids and just, I don't know, you walk around and get in, an inkling about something that reminds you of, of being in Moscow and and you have you did give me two of my closest friends um Candy and Kelly like like they said we vacation together we get together and um and it's just really connected me with parts of the world that I never even thought I would be able to go to so I, I'm with Candy I, I'm so ready to come back and visit um and see see you and Marina and the school um it, it's amazing what you did and what you started and this is this has been really educational. I didn't understand the history so much of the school um, and all that you've put together to make so many lives in, to impact so many different lives in different ways to bring um, Russia and the United States together. And this is really cool. And I, I still listen to podcasts about what's going on in Russia every week and try to keep up with, um, with, with uh, events over there. Um, but thank you so much for hosting this. This is amazing. Hey, we just got home from church. I can see you finally. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, Johnny, happy Valentine's Day. Happy, happy Valentine's, Valentine's Day to you, Marina. I'm not here, just to... uh, Matt, can you say if you were just, we'll talk about different schools and we'll go back to Georgia, sure. Can you wait a few minutes? Who, me? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, I can wait. Yes, we just, we just got home. Excellent. Matt. Sure, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Tatiana. It's so great to see you again, and Marina. And uh, I have to echo what uh, the person who just spoke. I, this is, uh, for me, been wonderful. I, did, I had no idea the history, uh, that, that the connections to uh, to the Netherlands and, and um, you know, going back to the 80s and all the work you've done, Tatiana. I mean, it doesn't surprise me, um, but it's just, uh, it's wonderful to... Uh, to hear all that, because I didn't know that when I was there. So I, I studied Russian in high school. I'm from New York, I'm just a few hours north of New York City. And then I studied it in college, and I, I became a history teacher in Hyde Park, New York, home of uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Um, and after two years of teaching, so I was still a very new teacher, but after two years of teaching, I felt that I had my connection to Russia was waning. I had been on an exchange in 1990 as a high school senior. I went and lived uh, there for a month with a host family when it was still the Soviet Union. And then I went back in 93 in my junior year of college to study at uh, Moscow State University for one semester um, as an exchange student. And so then when I started teaching in New York, I felt like I was gonna lose this connection with Russia. So I got a leave of absence and I have my family, my host family who lives in Moscow. I, I reached out to them and said, hey, do you know of any place I could work in Moscow, maybe teach? And they did a little research and found out about, uh, found out about Sas Marina and they wrote to me and said, we found this school, it's a private school. They gave me Tatiana's number. I just called, cold called her one day and said, I'd like to work there. And then I showed up, she, she said, sure. So I showed up and um, 
Tatiana does not remember this, I imagine, but uh, I showed up. It was still the summertime. The school year hadn't started yet, and I was really excited to work there, but she didn't have anything for me to do. So the first week in August, I was sanding the floors in one of the classrooms, sanding the floor and, and uh, varnishing it for her. Yeah, so I have a lot of fond memories of the school. I mean, the, the people there were so kind to me. I just, you know, I was a teacher for two years, so I, but I was still a new teacher, and I learned so much um, teaching, I, I got to see, I really was interested in seeing the other teachers, the, the Russian teachers and, and their their pedagogy and how they taught. And, you know, that was a big thing for me. It wasn't just me teaching English to your students. It was also what could I get from this and seeing your teachers and, and the experts in their craft and, and just learning as a new teacher from how they teach was really valuable to me. Um, I, I don't remember everybody's names, but I just remember your cook in your school, she was so kind to me. Your chauffeur was so kind to me. Um, just everybody, I just loved all of the people there. I remember being at your chauffeur's 60th birthday. That was the year I was there. It was his 60th birthday and it was a great party. And, and they treated me just like one of them. And I really felt included and loved and cared for um, while I was there. It was just a great experience. Um, you know, I got to go on the trip uh, with, with one of the grades to St. Petersburg and then I missed the train on the way back. <laughs> so the whole class and the teacher left St. Petersburg and I was still there and I had to get on the next train to go to go back to Moscow. I'm surprised Tatiana didn't kill me when uh, I got back. Um, <laughs> they didn't tell you, I guess. <laughs> um, but uh, it was it was a great experience and uh, I loved every minute of it. So thank you. And Johnny, we talked about Georgia, but we did not talk about your visit to Russia with Nani and Papi. Well, that was in 1994. Uh, was my first visit, and it was they told us uh, in the training before we left to go. There were 25 of us on that trip. I was the 25th person. Everybody else um, got paired up with another American, and we stayed in the homes of your teachers. Um, but I was the 25th person, so. Y'all put me with, with Valentina, who is just a dear love. And it's Valentine's Day, which is kind of like her name, you know, sweet lady. Uh, I didn't speak any Russian. They told us not to hug Russians because Russians were not affectionate. And so that we were not supposed to hug Russians and we were not supposed to um, tell any jokes because your sense of humor was different than ours. And the first thing that Valentina did when I got off the bus was run over to me and wrap her arms around me and hug me as tight as she could. And so it just completely dispelled all of those myths about the Russian people. And uh, I, I had fallen in love with Russia when I was in high school um, with the music, with, uh, with uh, the people there. And of course that was during communist times, but um, I fell in love with the people and with the music and with the art and with the passion that went along with that. I never thought in a million years would I ever have the, the blessing to, to be part of, a, a, of an experience going to Russia, much less meeting you and Marina and all of the, the school there, everybody just extremely nice. And um, so I, I, I guess that, you know, and are you still there? I, I, plus, tell us all came. about the musicals. That was the next thing. Yes, the musicals. We uh we actually did Alice in Wonderland uh, there. Uh, we worked with your music teacher, and it took us a while back and forth. But then when we finally came there and staged it, it was unbelievable how the parents were so supportive of everything. And then the next year, or a year or two later, we came um, back to Moscow and did uh, Children of the King, which was an original musical written by Don Phillips and myself. And um, we staged, you, in fact, Moscow at your school was the world premiere of Children of the King. And uh, I will never, ever forget that. Such a blessing. So yeah, it was wonderful. The students had this fantastic opportunity of having you, the musician, and your friends doing it. Well, it was, you know, we, it's like the, uh, Matt said earlier, you know, we were so blessed to be able to connect with you um, and, and the, the blessings that we got from just the experience of being there, we learned so much and still are learning. 
uh, to this day, I cannot believe it's been that many years ago, you know, that, uh, that, that we were, you know, you look the same, but I was a lot younger then, you know, you look exactly the same. Okay, sir. So, um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, you know, just to have that experience over these years and to stay in contact with you and with the school throughout the years, it's just been just remarkable. And I don't ever, ever want to lose that connection with you. In Russia, uh, if something very good happens to you, uh, we say that uh, I'm thankful to my fate. So I'm really thankful to my fate that uh, uh, the school, SAS Marina, was and still is in my life. <laughs> um, I've um, started um, studying in SAS Marina in 1991. When, um, uh, when it came to uh, the school where I studied as an, um, uh, um, uh, as an English courses uh, program. So um, I spent wonderful two years and in, in 1992, I went to, uh, on an exchange program to uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Um, and um, I've spent um, uh, 14 days there. Uh, last two days I spent in New York. And um, during all this trip, we uh, uh, had, um, uh, had many, um, well, the program was very interesting. So we visited, we uh, visited everything in uh, Pennsylvania. We went to Philadelphia. We went to... Um, um, Washington, D.C. Um, we uh, also visited um, uh, Hershey's plant, <laughs> which was uh, amazing. Uh, we stopped at um, Cedar Cliff uh, School. Uh, you know, I still, uh, I bought a sweatshirt there, uh, which is like uh, written Cedar Cliff Athletics. So I still have it in my uh, wardrobe <laughs> from 1992. So uh, wow. the time I spent there was um, was really wonderful. But um, um, and uh, the years passed by. So um, um, I uh, um, I have a daughter, and uh, when the time came for her to um, uh, attend the school, so I um, uh, thought, like every normal parent would think, that uh, you have to give your uh, your uh, daughter uh, a good education. Um, well, um, I uh, didn't know at that time that uh, uh, School Marina has uh, become um, a, a full educational school. So. Um, um, well, for, first of all, I tried to uh, send my daughter to the school where, where I was studying. Uh, but unfortunately, um, this school still exists, but it's, uh, it, uh, it's, it is not now uh, the same school that, as it was before um, you know, when I was studying in it. So um, uh, uh, we decided uh, that she would go to school uh, uh, connected to her kindergarten. Uh, here in Russia, it's uh, normal that uh, um, the, school, the kindergartens are connected to certain schools. So um, she went there, but uh, um, I uh, saw that uh, the English program that was at that school was rather poor. And as she uh, is an international child, just like me, uh, I thought that uh, studying English, uh, the good level of English would be very important for her. So um, the first, at that time, the, the first thing that came to my mind was um, an additional courses. And uh, the best courses I knew uh, were the courses that I uh, had in, uh, in the 19th um, in, uh, in the school marina. And I, I searched, uh, searched the internet, found the site of the school, and um, what I saw gave me, gave me a, a double feeling. 
uh, I felt um, uh, gladness and I felt a little sadness. Uh, the gladness was that I uh, that I knew that uh, the school still exists, which is uh, very very um, uh, which was very um, good because uh, here in Russia most of the businesses that started in 19s or even uh, before um, didn't survive. But uh, knowing. Uh, you, Tatiana Arkadyevna, had no doubt that uh, your school would definitely survive, but uh, it was a very surprise for me that you even developed into a full educational school. It was great. So uh, this but was... But then you got in touch with Miss Wilson and she told you... That <laughs> I, I will come to that there. point. I'm sorry that I'm taking maybe too much time, but uh, I'm just about to, <laughs> to tell. Uh, so uh, uh, the little sadness was that, uh, unfortunately, um, um, you um, don't make uh, like English studies uh, as a separate studies. So, uh, but the next thing what happened, I uh, consider it as a miracle. I got an invitation from uh, Elaine Wilson and from you, Tatiana Arkadyevna, to uh, 25th uh, anniversary of your school. So I visited. Um, I was very, very uh, happy to see you all <laughs> there. Uh, well, so many years have passed. Um, and then, then uh, we made like um, um, a family, um, family evening, um, um, and decided to try to send our daughter to uh, your school to study. Mm -hmm. So she, yes, she passed um, all the tests and uh, she started uh, to study from the second uh, grade and uh, until now she's, she's there. She's a so, sixth grader now. Yes, yes. So, uh, like I said, uh, your school is still in my life, which I am very happy about it. And uh, I, um, I want to um, congratulate you on this uh, Jubilee 30 years. Uh, it's it's a, a, a great uh, achievement and I wish you uh, only to develop, to grow and uh, to, uh, <laughs> to celebrate uh, 100th anniversary and further. <laughs> so thank you very much. I wanted Svetlana Grigorievna Terminasova, who is the president of the Foreign Languages Department and Regional Studies Department of the Moscow State University, uh, to say just a few words about uh, how the university he was helping the school. And uh, Svetlana Grigorievna was lecturing for us uh, on different subjects. Please, Svetlana Grigorievna. I'm sorry I could not ask you earlier. <laughs> no, it's all right. The pleasure is all mine. Um, I'm very happy. If you want to see somebody who is lucky, both lucky and happy, that's me. Because indeed, I thought that I'll be given the floor and I'll say my very nice and warm words, very sincere words, and then I'll do something else at home. But I'm lucky, you see, because I was, I feel privileged and happy that I took part in this Marina School family gathering, because I'm also actually a member of this family, because you uh, the, the children whom you taught, they come to us. So we are connected, you know, we are the next step sort of. And Marina, for instance, the here heroine, uh, well, Marina Yurovska is was our student. Now she's our teacher, and she is very good. Thank you. And we have quite a collection of um, um, people of who graduated, of students, our students who graduated, and one of them has written to me uh, because she was she couldn't come to my place and then we will be together. I'm talking about Anna Gabrielian, who is a very, very special 
pictures and she sent me a letter. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, right? yes, we can. Good, 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 good. just a second. Um, mm, yes, I just want to read to you how much she has achieved, how many things she has done, thanks to you and this, you see? Uh, she graduated in 2007 uh, from Marina, graduated with distinction uh, from Marina School. Uh, then um, five years later, she graduated from the school or faculty of uh, foreign languages and area studies, Moscow State University, again with distinction with a major in English American Area Studies and Translation. Then she pursued her PhD and defended her PhD thesis under my supervision, um, which was called Representation of Smile and Love as Concepts in English. She's a very cheerful person, you know, so she chose smi a smile, the concepts of um, laughter and smile. That's not all, you know, I was quite impressed. Thanks to you, I now know how much she has, has achieved through your education and ours. Um, then also, <laughs> just a second. Yes. Now she's been working with us, teaching English and Spanish uh, at, the, at, the, at our school. Um, she gives lectures on the art of public speaking and debates and teaches practical courses in English and Italian, sorry. She was awarded with a president's, our president's award for talented young scholars uh, in 2015. She has founded a, a, an English language club uh, at our faculty which unites students and lecturers interested in English and American cultures and we organize various concerts and theme nights, like music nights and humor nights and dance nights and so on. Uh, she also recently has graduated from Moscow Film School and has produced and directed two short films in the last two years. She also has published her first academic um, monograph on smile and laughter and then well, she um, also finishes that, that letter with words that she's a devoted SAS Marina and Lomonosov Moscow State University graduate. So we are united, you know, and I feel lucky and privileged and happy that I was present at this, as I said, family gathering. And I've Thank heard you. so many stories and I can see that what I realized, I realized now that um, actually what the school and Tatiana Arkadyevna are doing is great not only for, for so many people, not only for the people who are in school, for, for them, for, for the graduates from the school to go on in, into the great world and do such a lot of useful and interesting things there. Um, and also, I think that um, um, I'm very lucky to be with you and I've heard your stories. And also the main point for me that I've discovered that not only Tatiana Arkandiva and Marina and her team, not only they have done such a big thing for you as well as I could hear, but also that she has recruited so many people who like us or love us or at least are friendly with us which is mm. so important you know i think that's also a great deed thank you that's an archism thank you i was thinking only yeah. about your graduates of the students the school children and so on but thank you for recruiting so many people who putting it very mildly don't dislike us how about that no, but they actually, like I, 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 like that. I know, I know what you would say, but you understand. I feel very 
Thank you. Thank you. And I hope we will have time when the COVID is over and we will have you as a lecturer, we'll have Elaine as a lecturer, Elaine Wilson as a lecturer, because this is part of our life too. Now, I want to ask Canadian teacher we had, Benny Boykin, to say a few words, just a few words, please. Hi, everybody. It's great to be here. Lots of fun to hear all the backstories of uh, the history of the school. And thank you for inviting me. Um, my history with the school is uh, short lived, but the school, um, the opportunity to work at the school was a, um, was a critical year for me in my life. So uh, I was looking to improve my Russian language. I had studied it in university. It's also a heritage language for myself. And uh, my university friend, Christina, who was already in Russia uh, prior to that, had found this opportunity and um, I was not a teacher. I was a young adult <laughs> and uh, uh, thought I'd give it a try. So I cut my teeth um, at Sash Marina and uh, I apologize for any <laughs> mistakes that I had made, but I learned a lot. I uh, loved working with everybody there, still have uh, connections with uh, some of the people and um, those students, some of them have become my friends. Um, there's um, Armina, Sarkis, Suryan, uh, Julia Ven Venetian, um, Denise Mendreliuk is a friend of mine on Facebook. So, um, uh, Jenny Yakovleva, there's uh, people I'm still in contact with. So, you have students um, from different age groups. Yeah, I, I taught grade one, two, three, and uh, have come full circle, it seems, because I'm now a teacher and I teach grade two, three. <laughs> and uh, that, that experience helped me to um, decide to become a teacher after all. Um, but it was just so much fun to be 22 in Moscow <laughs> and, um, and uh, teaching. Maybe yeah, one day we should have a new exchange program with your school. Yeah, you know, and my school actually, uh, because we have a heritage language program at our school, I actually do teach Russian. So <laughs> in my Excellent. Western Canadian school. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, you know, thank you to Christina, my, my university friend who now lives in England, but we're still friends as well. And uh, we see each other every few years. I have not been back to Moscow. I've been to Western Europe quite a few times, but uh, would love to come back to Moscow, intend on coming back to Moscow and over the years have you know, made even more connections. So um, I have good reason to come back. And thank I'm just you. really excited to hear all these stories. So yeah. thank you very much. Maciek, please. Mr. Leto Torbek. After my master's, I wanted to get some experience with something in Russian. So I happened to meet a group of what they told us were Russian students. There's a difference between British English and American English students. We we think as university students, actually what it turned out to be was school pupils. But uh, nevertheless, I got chatting to the teachers and they said, speak to our boss who will be here in a few weeks, Tatiana Arkadyevna. So yeah, so I just arrived. <laughs> we made brief plans. And I think a few months later, I was in Moscow, which was like another planet to me because I'd grown up in Johannesburg, South Africa. So I, I was oh. born in Europe, so I only saw snow as a small child and then suddenly being covered in snow. And I, all I remember is I was saying, well, when's spring coming? And they said, <laughs> March. And I said, well, there's still snow lying around. And then at the beginning of April was still snowing. And I said, well, you said spring would be here a month ago. Anyway, it was a great life changer for me. So, I mean, I remember doing things like um, going out for a, for a smoke during lessons. And it was it was like minus twelve, and if I had to tell people in South Africa that they'd, they'd have thought well, we locked me up in a mental asylum. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was very different, and it, it really was had a huge uh, changing effect on my life. I, did, I returned to South Africa afterwards, didn't stay long. Um, I actually married the grade two teacher. And uh, well, 20 years ago, we moved to Germany. So I live in Germany since then. I go back to Russia, well, because of COVID, not now, but I, I've been back more times than I can count. And when I'm, we do go and visit Sash Marina when, we, when I'm there a bit longer. 
so which I hope we will do soon. We, and we do keep in contact with some of the teachers and I'm very happy that some of the teachers have actually even visited us in Germany. <laughs> so, and I hope that'll, that'll continue when we settle down to normal life again soon. Yeah, so thanks very much for all that you've, Thank you. all the effect that you've had on our lives. Thank you. Thank you. Hiyu Makineini was never teaching for us full time, but he is always at the speech contest, TED Talks, and he's the best judge we have. Ah, thank you, Tatiana. You say, you say the nicest things. You're so kind. I, I, I remember <laughs> our, our, our first meeting um, at your school where I was invited by, I think it was uh, Longman Pearson. Anna. Anna. Anna from Longman Pearson. And at the, at the time, my Russian was a lot worse than it than it um, is today, thankfully. And I was introduced to, to Tatiana Arkadyevna, and it was a nightmare for me to try to pronounce. Yeah, it's this. not when you I pronounce you Makineni. Oh, you're, you're not alone. Worse. You're not alone. Yeah, with a name like Makineni, it's a tough one. And when I was introduced to Tatiana Arkadyevna, I said, "Can I just call you Tatiana?" And you were like, oh, "No problem. Just call me Tatiana." It was such a relief and a joy at the time because as I said it was a challenge and and with the name like McEnany you know my, my father who sadly passed away not so long ago t t often tells the story when we were kids particularly in America he used to book tables in restaurants and flights for example in the name of Ryan or Smith you know something easier than McEnany and if he had tried to do that today, he probably would have been arrested for identity theft, you know, or some type of a fraudster. So with, with McEnany, it's, um, it's always a bit of a challenge, particularly if somebody's in telesales. And yeah, I, I never um, ended up working in your school, despite many invitations. Thank you very much. But uh, luckily, I was otherwise and have been and continue to be gainfully employed. But it's always a pleasure to visit you and your school and full of hospitality and the students are great and a credit to you as is your teaching um, staff are always friendly and open and frank and honest and, and I love being a judge at your events when time allows and as I always say to you and always say to the young students anybody particularly in their young uh, years and in their early teens that has the confidence and ability to get up on stage and perform, whether it's a TED talk or whether it's uh, <clears throat> some Irish drama or some English drama is um, a credit, a credit to the school and a credit to the environment that they're in to face their fears and to do things confidently <clears throat> and eloquently. And then, um, yeah, it's always positive positive experience and, and I, I do genuinely want to wish you and your school um, a very happy anniversary and a very appropriate day on Valentine's Day full of love for each other and love for education and if you noticed I was I was busy blowing up balloons for my soon-to-be five-year-old daughter a little bit earlier it's a very busy day for hearts and balloons in our home at the moment but every, everybody's sleeping now and we're we're full of um Everybody's sleeping except me, full of love. So Svetlana Grigorina was absolutely right in saying that people in the United States, in Canada, in Australia, in Ireland, all over the world are the same. And, uh, uh, and there are people who love each other. There are people who are good teachers. There are people who uh, love students. And uh, I think this is the most important. And when we meet those people and when they change the lives, our lives and the lives of our students, the lives of our kids, um, and our kids change their lives, this is what is happening in education. And I'm very thankful to all of you uh, for this conversation and for being in our lives. Марина Львовна, вы скажете что-нибудь, пожалуйста. Thank you. Thank you for being with us during all these years because uh, I'm absolutely sure that ESL teachers and uh, friends of our school from different parts of the world, uh, all you make our school special. And uh, all uh, you uh, is the reason why uh, 
parents uh, from Moscow uh, choose our school for their kids because uh, you uh, show uh, to our students uh, that uh, our world is diverse. Uh, you um, show uh, our students by your personality uh, the uh, peculiarities of uh, a culture of different countries. It is very, very important. Thank you for being with us all these uh, 30 years. We're, we appreciate it. And, and we feel um, uh, all of us to be a uh, SAS Marina team. And uh, I'm happy to be a part of uh, this team. Thank you. Thank you for being together. Uh, Arkady from Bryansk. Uh, we had an exchange program with India, and then we came back. Tell the story, but just yes, yes. I, I'll be very short yes. uh, because hello, I... Arkady. I... <laughs> uh, hello, Marina. Well, Marina is the person I met uh, this school through. Uh, we were in India in um, uh, taking part in uh, an international competition called Quanta. And uh, there I met Marie, uh, Marina Lvovna and uh, her students. And when I met them and they introduced themselves, I understood uh, what a nice school is that. Students were very intelligent, very polite, speaking fluently. I was proud that they represent my country in India. Then uh, I just want to tell you a short story when uh, uh, the, the principal of uh, uh, City Montessori School from India and her husband came uh, to Russia. It was very cold that winter and uh, she, uh, the principal of, Indi uh, of Indian school, she, when she came uh, to Moscow, she saw snow for the first time in her life. And she says, oh, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Holding a piece of snow in her palm. So uh, first we took them to Bryansk and we went around, um, they talked to our students and then we came to Moscow came to Moscow to Marina School and Tatiana Arkadyevna uh, met us uh, in her school and Amar, that's uh, the principal husband, and talked to her in her office for some time. After that, he came out, I said, is everything okay? He says, everything is fine. He is a man uh, with a lot of humor. So we went around Moscow and went to uh, the hotel. So at the hotel, uh, at seven o'clock in the morning, and their plane is uh, uh, about nine or 10 o'clock, I hear a knock, a bang on my door. And I said, what's up? He says, I don't have my passport. I don't have any money, no documents. Where are they? I say why are you asking me? He says, you are responsible for everything when I'm in Russia. When you are in India, I'm responsible. <laughs> he said, okay, probably you lost your folder with all the documents uh, on Tatiana's table there in her office, but it's still 7.30 in the morning. How can it be that Tatiana is at school at that time? But I tried, I called the school and the secretary says, yes, Tatiana is in school. Yes, I say, you are happy, we'll find it out now. And uh, I say, uh, Tatiana Arkadyevna, maybe you see a folder on the table. <laughs> and she says, yes, here it is. <laughs> he said, I tell him, you are, you are lucky. Tatiana found your money, your passports. Now you are not stuck in Russia. So. Uh, but, uh, well, I'm glad everything was there. <laughs> <laughs> they had a few thousand dollars and their passports and everything. Oh. So, uh, that's a, Tatiana okay. is the person who, who can make <laughs> things work. Tatiana Arkadina arranged everything and uh, her driver brought all the documents, everything and took us to the airport. Excellent. So, I 
Thank you very much. Uh, Thank I you. Want, I, just, I just wanted to say that uh, tomorrow is my first working day after two and a half months of in isolation. Uh, so tomorrow I will come inspired by, by this Zoom conference. Thank you very much because I always tell my students that English is a kind of music. It's, and it's music that comes directly to your heart. Hi there, Tanya Marina. Congratulations. We go back a long, long time. I now get emotional. <laughs> we met in 86, the day after Chernobyl. You were our guides and we had a wonderful time actually. And um, yeah, we've been in touch for such a long time. It was great. If we survived Chernobyl. We then did. we can survive <laughs> COVID, I think. That's right. Yes, we will. And I hope we will see each other soon again. Thank you, dear. Elaine, hi. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Great I'm to see good, you Anne. again. I'm good. still tr I'm still trying to get to Amsterdam. Okay, I'm waiting for you. <laughs> I, I'm waiting, waiting for last there. Year. I'll well. let you know as soon as I can. You should, yeah. you should. And I hope we will meet again. Yes, we will. We promise. Yes, definitely. Yeah. We're all connected in this world. Yes, it is. It's wonderful. Incredible.